All right, well, Casey here with CL Creative, where I'm teaching you web design and web flow one video at a time. And today we're going to talk about how we can make API calls inside of our web flow project to bring in data and then be able to manip manipulate that data to show that on the screen dynamically. So let's jump into the computer. I'll walk you through the code and the setup of how to do this. All right, well, here we are in the computer. And what I've been doing over the last couple of videos is I've actually created, or over the last video, excuse me, is I created a way for us to be able to put random quotes inside of Webflow. And we did this using the CMS, but today we're going to do this not just using the CMS. Uh, we are going to take it a step further, and we're actually going to make an API call in order to bring in all of these different quotes. And so as you see, every time I refresh the page, um, it is provide is pulling in a new quote from the API and it's displaying it on the screen. So how did we do this? Well, one of the things that we are actually doing is we're using this API called Quotable and it's a free API. It's a REST API. It allows us to pull in random quotes from different authors as well as you can take it a step further and you can use some of the tags um, that are there and you can pass these tags in in order to be able to pull back from a specific category and so that's exactly what I have done here I'm pulling back from the technology category so let me jump into the web flow and show you how all of this is actually set up and so if you've watched the other video this is pretty much set up in a very similar way uh, let me just open this up this bottom one down here is where I'm at with VS code. Now everything's going to be connected through VS code as I do this, but you can copy and paste this code inside of Webflow when you are indeed done. And so here's my setup. I just have uh, my section set up here with a quote a wrapper API, and I've just named it that because I have other quote wrappers on this page. And then inside of that, I have my quote item wrapper. And you just notice that it's just quote text. So I just have some dummy text in there with the author. And then I basically styled this just like I did in the last video. I'm going to put out a blog post as well so that you'll be able to see how everything is, is indeed set up. But let's jump over to the fun part, which is going to be our code. So... <clears throat> If we look at our code over here, um, I'm using this Webflow push so that, you know, I'll make sure that the page has been loaded whenever, um, before all of this code is going to run. But here is what we're doing. We're making this async uh, function API call, and we're using try catch in order to do that. And then I'm also using GSAP in order to make this so that whenever you scroll into the section, it is going to show that quote. But this is not necessarily a part of the API call, though it is a different way to be able to display this. So let me walk you through what this code is doing. Now, at the very beginning, I am just grabbing this quote wrapper with a query selector. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can now display this whenever I scroll into view with GSAP. The next thing I'm doing is I'm saving this base URL, which is the base URL that we get from quotable so if we pop over here to quotable and we just go to their welcome guide they give us this this base url right here and this is what i have placed inside of of this variable now we're going to create our asynchronous function and so we're going to async function quote and then it's going to have two parameters that we're going to pass in we're going to pass in the endpoint and then we're going to pass in the tag and the tag is what's going to allow us to choose which category we want to pull these quotes from so that we have some sort of control over um, where these random quotes are coming from to make sure they match our particular project now the next thing we're doing is I'm checking to see if this Earl has a tag associated with it so down here whenever I make this call am I going to pass in this tag? And, and in this case, I am passing in the tag. And so if I pass in the tag, I'm using a ternary operator to check this. Um, it is going to create this URL right here. It's going to create our base URL with our endpoint, and then it's going to add in our tag. If there's no tag passed in, then it's just going to create our base URL with the 
endpoint. Now, I'm going to put all of this code inside of a blog post, which is going to be linked down below. I just want to walk you through how this actually works. And at this point, um, we have our URL constructed. And now we are actually going to make this call. Now, this is asynchronous, and so it's going to wait for this call to happen. And once it happens, we're going to collect this inside of this response variable. Now, we're going to handle some errors at this point. And so if this response is OK, if we get back like a 200 request, um, then we're going to move on in our code. If we get back, you know, a, a different uh, response that's not a 200, then it's going to throw this error for us. And it's going to tell us that it failed to fetch the quote. Now what we are doing here is we've got our response back and now we're going to begin to work with that. So we're going to parse that response here, this JSON that we are getting back. And what we're, what we're doing is we're going to just take the author and we're going to take the content from this. So the author is the author of the quote and then the content is going to be the actual content that we have here. So if I jump over here, you can see if I just grab a response, what you're going to see here is what we are actually getting back. And so we're going to grab this content right here, which is basically the quote. And then we're going to just grab this author right here, which is basically, um, you know, Blase Pascal here. So it's the author. Um, so we're using destructuring to do that. So what we're saving the author to a variable, we're saving the content to a variable, and that's it. That's all we're pulling back from this response that we are actually going to be using. Then we're going to return this, and we're going to return this inside of an object. So we're going to have an author and content for our return. We have a catch block here. In case there's an error that takes place, it's going to catch that error for us and display this. Now, here's where you know some of the magic begins to happen. So we've, we've made this call right here, and we passed in random, which is going to be our endpoint. And then we're also passing in a tag. And the tag that I chose to pass in since I'm in web design and web development is technology. And so we've structured that here. And it's going to reach out, and it's going to grab a random quote from the technology category. And it's going to display it. So it's going to pull that quote in right here and you can use data i'm using quote just so that we know exactly what it is that we are doing here and i'm just going to console log this so i'm getting my my author and then i'm going to get my quote just so that i see what i am working with to make sure everything is good now here we're going to check to make sure that this quote did indeed come in so did we get some actual data if we got some data well we're going to make to query selection. So let me hop back over here to my Webflow project and show you what we're going to be grabbing. The first thing that we're going to grab is this quote text API. So this is going to be our header or the actual text, excuse me, uh, where the quote is going to be. So I've named this quote content just to be consistent with the naming that we are getting back from the API and the naming that we have placed here for our variables. And then I'm also grabbing the quote author, which is just this right here. So our quote author API, and we are query selecting that to grab that, and we are saving that into this particular variable. Now, the next thing that we want to do, and this is how we're actually getting the quote on our page, is we want to take this quote content that we have query selected um, and save it into this variable. And what we want to do is affect its text content. So essentially we want to change the text content that you see here, this quote text. And we're going to use the quote dot content that we get back from our API. And then this is, we're going to do the same thing with the author. We are going to change its text content and we're going to say quote dot author. So we're taking this data that we have here and we are drilling down because if you remember, we saved author and we saved content. And so we are drilling down to quote.content and quote.author. Now that is just going to get placed on the page. If there is no quote that comes back, so if this returns false, then we're going to console log no quote was found. There was an error fetching that particular quote. So that's really all that it is. 
Um, we're, we're reaching out, we're grabbing this quote, and we're pulling that in. We're manipulating some of the data on the page in order to make that happen. Now, one of the things that I have done here in, in this page, you can see quote text here, and you can see author name here. This is down the page, so you may not have to worry about this too much. Uh, if you just wanted to display this, right? But I want to do more than display this. I actually want this to fade in as I scroll into the section. And so I'm reaching out to GSAP in order to do that. And so this quote wrapper that we query selected up here um, earlier, I'm using that and I'm using a GSAP.2 tween at this point. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change the opacity to one over a duration of one second with a ease of power one in and we're tying this or we're utilizing scroll trigger for all of this to happen and the scroll trigger is going to be on our quote wrapper so this wrapper right here is where this is going to happen and so as we scroll into the section this is actually going to fade in now one of the things that we need to make sure that we set up here in order for this to work inside of our project uh, and I'll show you this if I pop into this quote generator <clears throat> one of the things that you need to set up is you you want to make sure this quote wrapper API has an opacity of zero to begin with now we can see it inside of Webflow because it is not applying that CSS here and and that's the reason why I wrote it in uh, the code instead of just applying opacity zero here because I wanted to be able to see this. You could indeed just imply, uh, apply zero opacity over here in the style panel, but then you wouldn't be able to see this text. You may not be able to change the style of it. And so this is just a way for us to be able to um, make this opacity zero when the page actually loads, but it is uh, going to um, allow us to be able to see the content to work with it. Okay. I think you got that. The next thing that you need to make sure that you place in here is this, if you want to use GSAP, it is um, the GSAP library. And then we also need to do scroll trigger. And then over here where this actually is going to end up getting put in this, this actual code over here, I'm going to paste it in. We have our document dot add event listener and we're, we're listening for the DOM content to be loaded, then it's gonna run this particular function. And, and what we're doing here is we are actually registering this plugin. So the scroll trigger plugin for GSAP, you need to make sure that you do that. Then you can just take all of this code that I'm going to provide you and you can copy and paste it into the body here. Now you're seeing a lot of code because this is from a different project, but you know, essentially you're just gonna copy and paste that code right here and then that is going to work within our project it's going to make that call for us i'm going to cancel those changes here whoops discard changes and then we go back over here to our live site and you can see that if i refresh the page this is from the other deal this is from pulling from the cms but here we're going to be pulling from our API call and you can see indeed that it does pull that pull that back and then if we go back up here it'll make another API call to us and we scroll into view we're gonna get a quote from Albert Einstein um, you know you're gonna get a quote here from John Lasseter now I'm pulling from the technology category you can drill down further and pull you know from specific authors if they have you know multiple quotes to be able to pull from you can pull from you know multiple different categories or you can just get rid of this category tag altogether so let me just show you that so say i don't want to pull from a category i just want all the random quotes that this api has to offer then i can just get rid of that save it come back over here we'll reload our page and we are getting something from brian tracy you know and now we're getting something here none of these have anything to do with technology but if we want to bring back technology we just place that right back in there and now we're getting some technology quotes back and so you can go and you can look and see what other tags that are there inside of the quotable api 
and place those in here if you want specific ones. I think I have like inspirational quotes and, you know, a few religious quotes and a number of different other quotes that are in there for you to be able to use inside of your web web project. Now, you don't have to, of course, place it like I have done here. You could place it up here at the top. Maybe you just want to quote every time somebody comes to your website. That is just going to be there on page load. Um, you could do that. You could place it on different pages, things like that. You could even probably use it as a way to um, transition between pages. Maybe as their page is transitioning, you have a quote that is that is pulled in and is showing for a brief period of time. Uh, one of the things that you can also do with the this API is you can pass in some options that will limit the characters. So say you were going to do something like that, or maybe you're going to put it up here in the banner. You don't want to put a quote that is a lot of lines. Now, this is obviously a, a large quote, but you can actually limit the amount of characters that the quote has um, as well. So there's a number of different things that you can do with this quotable API. Uh, their, their docs are okay, but... Uh, it's something that you can definitely work through. I've given you a good head start here uh, with this with this particular code. Now, of course, you're not going to have it in VS Code. I'm just using that so I don't have to keep publishing the project every single time I make a change in here. But eventually, I will take this code and I will paste it like I talked about a moment ago inside of my Webflow project like you saw there on the screen. So hopefully, this helps you when you think about making API calls uh, using uh, async away in order to do that with a try catch and being able to process those and add those to the UI inside of or on in your Webflow project to be able to display. All right. I hope to see you on the next video. If you like this video, if you got some value out of it, would you like uh, uh, give me a thumbs up? It definitely helps to you know get this video out there for more people. And if you want more content like this, subscribe. If you have some sort of video that you want to see, then leave it down in the comments and I will try to make a video for you. This actually came out of a conversation I had with another listener who is talking about wanting to put random quotes on their website. And so I'm giving you guys a number of different ways to do that with my last video where it's more CMS driven. And this one right here is more API driven. Hope to see you on the next video.